Welcome to PIC Computing A Level Computing video number two, where we look at something called the system's life cycle. Now, the first thing to think about is why we need the system's life cycle. Um, and the reason is that failure to plan always equals a plan to fail, as is shown in the image here. If you can't see where the huge planning floor is here, then just pause the video until you work it out. Not everything needs a detailed plan. For example, making a cup of tea. Lots of us make cups of tea every day. and We don't need a detailed plan to follow to do it. We don't need a big technical manual. It's something that we just know how to do. But designing a new computer system or some new software does need to follow a plan. And this is called the SDLC, the Systems Development Life Cycle might also be known as the software development life cycle or the systems life cycle and a definition of it would be a set of rules written as a series of stages that need to be followed in order to produce the desired system the systems life cycle might follow um, a particular model of stages um, there are lots of different models there are two main ones that you'll need to know about in more detail in a future video for a level computing the first is the waterfall model and there's some different stages on top of each other and hopefully you'll see why it's called the waterfall model the second is the spiral model and I'm sure you'll see why that's called a spiral whoever's working on a systems lifecycle project needs to have a good working relationship with the customer For example, if I'm making a cup of tea for uh, somebody else and not myself, then I need to be able to communicate with that person to find out how they like their tea. They know more about the problem than I do. In computing, we're more likely to be um, talking to a customer who has a business need. For example, it might be somebody working in an office that needs a computer system to replace a paper-based system. The person that helps the customer or the client is known as the systems analyst. So here we've got a member of the US Navy talking to the systems analyst. There he is, uh, about what he, how he'd like to see his computer system improved. In brief, here are the different stages uh, typically of the system's life cycle. Firstly, we've got problem definition, finding out from the client what is the problem that they need to solve. Then it's the feasibility study where the systems analyst decides is this problem feasible to fix? Is it doable? Then the systems analyst collects information about the system in more detail and then analyzes every single step of the current system. Then a new system is designed and planned out before it is built in the implementation stage where a programmer will actually build it. The system is then evaluated to see if it has met the needs and that may involve lots of testing. It's then installed by uh, an installation team on the computers for the company and over time it will need maintenance, it will need things fixing which is why you might have these steps on the left hand side back up the waterfall model to go back into things like the design stage or even the analysis stage but more on the waterfall and spiral models in a future video in this video we're going to look a little bit more closely at the top two stages problem definition and feasibility study in problem definition the client who knows what the problem is will need to talk to the analyst who knows what can be achieved technically. The problem must be clearly communicated between the two. They must have a clear communication. Otherwise, the analyst might be trying to solve something that is not possible to solve. Or, the solution that is finally created may not solve the problem. In the feasibility study stage, the client is no longer needed 
as the analyst has all the information they need so far. What the analyst needs to do is decide is the project feasible in terms of technology for example if the project requires a, a real super duper computer that hasn't even been invented yet or is unlikely to be invented in the future then the project should be scrapped it's just not feasible is the project feasible economically does a company that wants it have enough money and resource and staff to put into building it is the project feasible socially if it's going to make lots of people unemployed is that something the government or a corporate responsible company do they really want that has the company got the skills in the future to keep running the system and is the system actually giving value is it giving value in terms of saving time or saving money etc in the next video we'll look more closely at information collection